and we're live. Okay, so welcome to the DAPS Working Group. This is the fourth meeting, and today's the 21st first of May, 2024. Um, as we always uh, do, uh, we start with some initiative updates. Um, and today also Robin is going to show us uh, what he's been working on with Lucid, this idea of like universal SIDS as like a container format for self-contained apps, I suppose. That's just me paraphrasing what I read. Uh, so with that, we don't have Russell or um, Alex, aka Aching Brain today. Um, so I don't know how much detail we want to get into, um, but I see that uh, there's a pull request merged in here regarding the eviction filter. So uh, I don't know if you know, but um, as of recently, we now support sessions in Helia and in Helia Verified Fetch, which is used by the service Worker Gateway, which means that um, Helia Verified Fetch is capable of doing direct retrieval based on responses from the delegated routing endpoint. That was a mouthful, but this is kind of like the, the TLDR. This is that direct retrieval is almost there. It's kind of already there now for... Uh, providers that support HTTPS, which right now is constrained to Web3 storage. Uh, but uh, with Web Transport, Web RTC Direct, this will also pave the way to um, like direct retrieval also from peers directly. So anyways, long-winded saying there was like a little bug that we found that was causing some repeat requests going out when these sessions were being created. And a bug fix for that was just merged. Um, and I linked to that um, in the meeting notes. Um, yeah, and I guess that was released today and that will slowly propagate up to Verified Fetch and from there to the Service Worker Gateway. Uh, which brings us to Verified Fetch. I don't think there's much new there. Um, really, it's, uh, yeah, I'm going to just look at the releases to see. Uh, if there's anything, no, I think we're mostly working now um, on the uh, conformance tests and making sure that it adheres as much as possible to the um, uh, trustless API gateway spec, uh, just in terms of the response objects that it returns. Um, and Russell's doing some great work there of plowing through a lot of these conformance tests and uh, making adjustments to the code so that they adhere. Any notes you want to maybe add, Lytle, since um, you've also been working on some of the conformance tests there? Uh, I, I guess like the, this is one of those things that there's it's, there's nothing flash, flashy to show end user other than, hey, things work more reliably. <laughs> you have the same experience you had for the past years by running, uh, I don't know, IPFS desktop or Kubo locally. Uh, or delegating the trust to some remote gateway. Uh, but now you can do more and more uh, on the client or in the in web app uh, that is using verified fetch. Uh, somehow we got the, the next one update uh, about like service worker gateway kind of like surfaces that as in we are not talking about it because the conformance work is happening in verified fetch. Uh, this is the solid foundation uh, that ensures you got the same uh, experience, the same behavior of pathing. Um, there are still gaps to to close, but they're like fairly small. Um, and uh, the the work are around like service worker gateways, an example of an application that's built on top of verified fetch, and does not have to worry about those things. Uh, there is a work in progress on the conformance as in both uh, fixing things in uh, verified fetch, but we also landed a new release of gateway conformance with some uh, uh, improvements to the test suite itself. Because uh, I probably mentioned that before on this call, uh, the way gateway conformance works is we took the legacy, the a huge amount of tests from Kubo, uh, but when we extracted the gateway logic into a standalone box or gateway library, we also turned those Kubo specific tests 
into like a generic agnostic uh, test suite similar to web platform tests, but for our smaller IPFS uh, use case. Um, and now we run those uh, conformance tests against different implementations. So we have Kubo, which has an embedded gateway, but we also have a standalone uh, rainbow um, gateway, which powers IPFS IO and web dot link uh, public uh, utility gateways. Uh, and they behave the same because we are running uh, not just on the top of the same library, but we also run conformance tests. Um, and now the same tests are run against the, the JS side of things. Um, yeah, but uh, works is moving forward. Uh, we are improving the test suite in that the behaviors that were specific to Kubo or Go are now being uh, clarified or either relaxed or removed. We, we, we kind of like overshoot with conformance. Uh, so you, you still will find uh, many uh, test checks which check Kubo specific behaviors. But if you see them, just open an issue in gateway conformance repo. Uh, this is part of the process. Uh, of, over time, it will get uh, generic enough. And now we are finally, by the thanks to the, like doing the thing in a different language with totally different library, we finally hit another wave of uh, things that should not be in conformance, or maybe we should not test as specifically, we should be more generic in those tests. Um, yeah, so that's on uh, verified fetch, I guess. Russell uh, probably had a better update, but um, we are moving forward. Oh, and if you are using uh, gateway conformance in CI, um, uh, the way we release things is if the tests are being relaxed, we re ship that as a patch release. Uh, so if you follow V5 tag, you get an update because that will not break you. But if there's any situation when we change the tests or break them, uh, then we make like a, a breaking release. So uh, our goal is to minimize the impact on the, on the CI, uh, but it may happen that uh, there's a regression, but you can always like pin to a specific version. Um, if you run on CI, yeah, and that's that's it I, on that topic, I guess. Cool, thanks, Lyle. Um, Alex, we skipped over uh, the updates um, to Helia, but is there anything you want to share? I, I spoke a little bit about the eviction filter and the bug that was just fixed there, and how that will propagate up. Anything else um, that you think is worth mentioning? Um. The new fix for the session is that was the sort of thing that you mentioned. Um, I'm also working on a browser plugin for Helio so that you can debug it, or you can you can you know inspect the state of the node. That should be more ready later this week. Does anybody want a demo? Yes, I tried to get it running earlier today and I couldn't. So I'd love to see a demo. I don't know if you saw my comment. Uh, I did, yeah. Um, I was going to look into it. Can I share my screen? Can I share my yeah. screen while other participants are sharing? You should be able okay. to. So here is a Firefox window. This is running uh, the latest ish version of Firefox. Um, so it's one with web transport support. So just reloaded the page. I can open the developer tools. And we can see there's a little P2P icon here. So I go to the P2P, it's going to try and connect to it. And this is actually going to fail after a few seconds because you have to tell it uh, that it's allowed to use um, the, uh, is allowed to communicate with the page. So there's this tiny, tiny green dot here. I was going nuts trying to work out why I couldn't get the thing to connect to anything. And it turns out it's this tiny green dot. This tiny green dot means that you need to do something. So so that's why I put this picture in, which I hopefully show people, look, look, that's what you need to do. So you click on the thing with the tiny, tiny green dot, and then you allow it. And then bang, it all starts working. So I can see that my node is running. I have a peer ID. 
This is the agent version that I'm going to exchange during identify. I'm listening on these multi adders. So you'll see, like, so I've got some P2P circuit. I'm listening on WebRTC. These are the protocols that it supports. Um, I can click over to the peers tab and I can see that I've got five peers. Look at this. This is this is a this is a this is a JS P two P peer running running on uh, Node twenty. Isn't that amazing? Um, and so you can see the the uh, the addresses that your peer is listening on. So we've got these funky icons. This is like TCP. This is WebSockets. Believe it or not, the semi official WebSockets icon it totally says WebSockets to me. I don't know. Um, this is quick, so obviously Node can't listen on quick. So yeah, you'll notice it's actually a P2P circuit address. Um, so this is a Node, uh, Node, a Node.js node that's running that's got a it's listening on a, a circuit relay of a of a uh, um, a Go address somewhere. Oh, I just disconnected from it. Oh look, here's a Helio node. Look, I'm talking to a Helio node, and this is also running on on nodes. Sometimes you actually see a browser nodes, which is great. Um, yeah, anyway, so, uh, you can, you can like, you can copy and paste these addresses now, which is really useful and was really hard to implement, um, copy and paste in V3 manifest plugins. Oh my God. I wanted to die. Um, okay. Yeah, cool. Uh, so what else can you do? So you can hit up the uh, debug. So one thing that's really useful is being able to turn on debug logs that you'll see in the console. There's you know, your normal kind of distributed application, lots of errors. Uh, if I go back to my plugin, I can do things like I can turn logging on dynamically. So I can hit go and I go back to the console. So now I've got lots of lib P2P logs appearing. I think, oh no, that's too much. That's all too much. So I'm just going to disable the login and now it's going to be quiet again. What else? So the next thing to do is going to be like routing. So you can do routing queries in the browser using DHT things um, or, you know, delegated things as well. Uh, so it would be nice here to have, um, you know, like what's going on in the query. So like, who am I dialing? What's erroring? What's not erroring? What are the results that I'm getting? All in real time. Um, that's I think once that's in, that's kind of minimum viable. And I think people should totally start like hacking on it. Um what I'd like to do is oh yeah, here's another thing I say there's a little little helio icon there. So because this is a helio node, so it's actually examined the the agent and because it's detected helio in it, it's swapped out that. So normally so if you don't get that, you get a little P to P icon there. So like little little niceties like that. Um but yeah, so I'd like to get it to like uh like dynamically look at the node configuration and then you can have different different kind of panels up here based on what the node is capable of. So like if the node supports identify, then why can't you just hit identify from the from the dev tools and like just identify with a random peer? Like that kind of stuff. Um I think that's gonna be quite fun. Look how many peers I've got. Look, 29 peers now. What fun. You can see um the green things here also. These are the tags. Um, so these are, these are the closest tags. These are the closest peers that I'm directly connected to, uh, the, the code closest to me on the network, um, the circuit relay relay. Uh, so it's the circuit relay tag and this is a relay. So this is a relay that I'm using, um, which is why I've got the slightly, uh, cumbersome tag name. Um, but yeah. Are these the tags from the peer book? Yes. Yes, they are. Cool. Dive up, dive the demo. Love it. That's cool. Coming to an so is the idea? idea you. Yeah, is the idea also to publish this to the uh, store, to the extension store? Is, it, is that what oh, it's yeah. called? The extension store. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So I worked in Chrome and Firefox. Um, I started trying to get it to work on Safari. But the first instruction was like, compile using Xcode. And I was like, maybe later, maybe later. Um, but yes, absolutely. Uh, so I think there'll be a delay before we do that because, um, you know, things like to get it to talk to all the pages, you need to say, give me permissions on all the, all the entire internet, which apparently takes a long time to review and I think we're going to end up 
uh, going backwards and forwards on on features and and things a little bit first. Um, so it would be good to just let it settle and then submit to the app store. But in the interim, people can just check out the the GitHub repo and just run it as a as a local uncompressed um, extension. Very cool. Visibility. It's so good. <laughs> yes, yeah. I know what the thing is doing. Can, can you add a time machine so that we had this a few years ago? I mean, I'll see what I can do. Like, I've, I've been plumbing the depths of the web extension API. I'll see if they've got anything for that, but I can't promise anything. It's there. It's just getting permissions for it as a bitch. Um. <laughs> Something uh, to note is that we have an extension which already bothered people for those permissions. <laughs> and we historically had, a, a, like in Companion, we had a JS IPFS uh, backend, which was like opt-in. Uh, we, we could, uh, we could uh, go that route if that's useful, uh, ship it as like something people can enable and experiment. Uh, in yeah, at some point we'll ha have to figure out what's the desired UX, but the, the the blocks and the pieces are landing in a nice order. As in, uh, now we have uh, this capability to run a node in uh, extension again, and it's more useful than the old one. And uh, the service worker gate. The problem is that like, we cannot open a TCP port to like host the websites, right? But oh, we now have service worker gateway, which effectively can. It's a means of rendering bytes without waiting for browsers to give us additional uh, APIs. So, some if you like squeeze your eyes, you can see where uh, those things are uh, going to. Uh, figuring out how like uh, the node from running inside the browser extension uh, providing bytes to the service worker on some domain that provides origin isolation gets you like ninety nine point nine percent where we want to be. Um, so it's interest interesting time. Uh, I see that it's like a service worker update, which I wrote. <laughs> so since I started talking, maybe I'll go uh, quickly over it. Uh, yeah, we shipped a, a better quality 1.2, uh, mo mostly uh, UX improvements. And there's a development preview uh, on in browser.dev which gives you uh, origin isolation. Um, I don't know if I can share my screen one second. Let's see if I can share this. You should be able to, yeah. Okay. And now, yep. So uh, I opened the, this is like a fresh empty browser profile. So no service workers were registered at all. Um, and if you open the browser.dev, you will see that now some basic information, what the project is, what it does, how it was built. Uh, but uh, the gist is that if you enter CAD content path or a URL that conforms to um, IPFS addresses on the web today, and you load the content, uh, the page will open uh, a subdomain URL. Uh, so if you open that, uh, if you open that, for the very first time, you had no service worker installed. So you have this page asking you to like review config. You can like change which public gateways you use, which delegated routing endpoints you use, and also for DNS link and things like uh, e ENS, uh, the, the DNS over HTTPS endpoint. Um, and once you are OK with settings and you load the thing, uh, Usually it's not that fast, <laughs> it's just managing expectations, <laughs> but it's a very simple page and um, uh, it fits in a single block. Uh, so one or two blocks uh, got fetched pretty fast. Uh, and now if you want to open something there, uh, yeah. It eff it's effectively good enough for, uh, for small websites. It gets tricky when it comes to like bigger things. Uh, there may be still some, maybe I'll trigger an error because <laughs> the demo without an error is not uh, a good demo. Uh, maybe it's something related to 
oh yeah, maybe like this one. Yeah, so this is a feature because now if the service worker has a problem, you get this useful error page, which gives you information about the settings of service worker and why more or less why the, the problem occurred. So uh, less technical people can just screenshot and uh, send it our way. Um, and that's kind of like tying back to the conformance tests. Uh, there's something special or a gap uh, when it comes to this specific path, this specific document. I don't know why, uh, but now we, we can like quickly, if someone reports this, we, we can look into it. Uh, because in general, so you don't actually you... know the reason why this one is broken. No, I I I I I, I noticed this problem uh, uh, five minutes ago. Uh, I suspect it may be related to uh, trailing IPNS slash or something. being in the path, or maybe IPNS, or maybe DNS link cache uh, expired. Who knows? Uh, you know, we can retry, but it's. Uh, uh, not working, uh, but that's like an example of uh, improved UX in this release. Uh, and especially like if someone is familiar with web development, debugging service workers is not the best. Uh, visibility into requests is not the best. Uh, but thanks to this, we we have a, a pretty good setup to iterate and improve further. Um, yeah, so that's the small demo. Um, give it a try and. Try to load your website, and if you find a bug, just screenshot the error page and send it our way. Uh, the organic feedback is very, very useful. And that's it. Cool. Thanks, Lidl. One of the things that I think is really cool about this is that everything is locally cached in the service worker. So suddenly it makes any static site essentially cacheable in the browser, which is really nice and offline ready. Yeah, so this is like how you leverage IPFS and uh, verified fetch to get like make get any website that is published on IPFS to also be offline first, kind of. Like, you don't need to do anything. You just publish a thing you know, over DNS link and you get this for free. Um, Cool. I guess that brings us to uh, the last part, which is uh, Robin's demo of uh, Lucid. Okay. Well, it's not much of a demo, but it's just like a very quick uh, look at it. Hang on. They keep changing the user. Okay. I think this should show you my screen. Do you see a nice Firefox thing with a wonderful github page wonderful um so basically i've been i've been poking at uh this idea which is that uh, a lot of people encounter the ipfs and they find uh, that it's a little bit complicated to use it and to to bring their web knowledge to 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 bear when trying to develop with it so i decided to be opinionated as fuck and to um make this uh, subset of cids that uh, really only have as as few options as possible and so it's only v1 it's only base 32 um there's only raw and dax Hebor, it's only blake 3 etc um and the idea is to really really have this thing that that can be implemented with with a tiny bit of javascript that people can um somewhat more readily understand and so that's that's basically a basis for exploration like if we get rid of a lot of stuff how much still works and how can we still bridge it to 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 the web and the idea is that based on this tiny foundation of, of a new thing look at other things that that can be built that uh might you know map well to like web habits and so um, one thing that I've been interested in for a while is this idea of web tiles that are basically like very simple components, re-implementations of the idea of, of, of widgets and stuff, um, but content addressed. And uh, so the idea here is, is extremely, extremely basic. A web tile is just a collection of CIDs with a little bit of metadata. Uh, the CIDs are all lucids. Um, and the metadata is is really where is my editor? Um, 
the metadata is 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 it matches what you get in a manifest so it's like i don't know how well is this big enough ish um, okay but i would embiggen slightly i don't know how to embiggen on this thing though um appearance uh, zoom uh, in yeah zoom in yes it's perfect uh, this is embiggened. Um, so you know it's very basic metadata. And the 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 thing that I have, so this is just the manifest that has name description, the icon, because icons are cool. Um, and this is just like a very simple um web thing. It's just a a, a web page with an image in it. Uh that there's really nothing to it. Um, but I can whoops, where is it? Um I can run. Uh, in the way that web developers are, 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 are fond of doing, I can run this this little thing uh, as a dev server and point it to the directory, and it magically makes a tile. And the tile is served in a way that um, is easily accessed. Um, I use a little um, worker. So the context is uh, you know, a web tile with a little uh, you know, a Lucid. It loads perfectly. As you can find, this is a true IPFS thing because you can all recognize the cat. Um, and this is meant to be web developer friendly. So the idea is like, we, you know, when if, if I update something, say I change the color of the background, um, it will it will magically update. It will communicate to the front end to tell it to load a new CID and update the 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 the, the, the tile. That's really it. Uh, it's really an experiment in in self contained uh, DAPs. One of the values of using this format is really that everything is content addressed in it, and then the format is locked down. And so that means that you can create a DAP that is fully self-contained and there is no uh, possibility for coding inj injection afterwards. So it's not a thing where, you know, you might have a dependency on JavaScript somewhere on the web that someone can change and then break, break your model. This is meant to be like properly locked down such that once you've loaded it, um, you, you, you can distribute everything in a content address manner, and you can be sure that, that you're getting a, basically a reproducible build of your DAP as it were. That's it. It's a I'll turn to the green because it's nicer. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. It, it's a legitimate IPFS demo with this picture. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, did you have like any thoughts about like a means of distributing this uh of like distributing uh the actual data behind the lucid uh over existing ipfs infrastructure so i mean normally anything that supports it, it, it they're meant to be cid compatible right so normally anything that supports that set of cid options should just work um but of course, because I used Blake three, it might involve big blocks, and you know, not everyone likes big blocks. Um, but apart from that, uh, and I'm only using Blake three because I wanted to pick one, um, and it could be another one. I, I, I honestly don't care; just want one thing that works. The idea is just to have just one, um, reducing optionality. Uh, but normally, this it, you know, you, this this is all IPFS compatible. Um, in fact, under the hood. Um, it exposes the way it exposes it to the front to the front end is with some kind of mini gateway, um, and it's loaded using a, a mini service worker. Is um, yeah. I'm going, Adi. What's the if you if you can you distribute the in like I guess the entire tile is the manifest. So how is the I, I, yeah. What is the I guess the the format or whatever of of the manifest and how you're, are you just um, you're sort of like Blake threeing that also and then so basically or something. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. We don't see it here because it's generated on the fly. Um, but basically, a a manifest. Hang on. A manifest is this plus. Uh, a map of resources and the map of resources will be like 
uh, a path and the path has to be unique. And then it will be, there's an SRC and this is this is a CID. Um, so it's gonna be like Buffy, whatever. Um, and then, and also media type. Ah, fuck's sake. Um, and so that's that's <clears throat> that's basically the, the 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 format, and that thing gets encoded as DAG CBOR and 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 gets a CID. And all all of the all, all of the um, SRCs are 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 IPLD links. Okay, so there, so it's it's it, it's transcoded into some DAG CBOR thing that represents this map, and then yep. okay. And the idea is like to to so one one thing that this deliberately doesn't use is UnixFS, um, and the idea is really that here so you know the way the way URLs work the path is just a string right it's not a series of directories it's one string, and so this is meant to match that um, it's it's just a string lookup of the of the of the path. Um, and also, it's meant to have built-in support for, for 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 media types, so you don't need any kind of separate lookup or 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 processing. Um, and so this is meant like really to like wedge it into into a, a, a web way of approaching this. And that, that basically, really, the idea is like so. A lot of the work that's been done, a lot of the prior art. Of like extensions and widgets and 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 yada yada, they they use a packaging format, so they 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 will zip up the content and then ship that. The idea here is is to really use uh, CIDs instead, and so the the manifest is really the tile. Everything else is is a CID that has to be retrieved separately, um, which benefits in terms of of, of caching. Uh, you don't want one big fucking zip file with like you know tons of stuff if you already have all your your dependencies. So for people shipping JavaScript things, that can have like pretty pretty interesting um, effects uh, because like you you might be shipping a tiny thing. Um, so for example, if I were to include a say a JavaScript file, would that go into the resources map or yep yep with like the so... path to slash my.js or build.js, build.js? Yeah, so look, uh, let's just like add it. Uh, so danny.js, I've added it. Let's say, let's have it do something really cool. Error high. Um, and then let's just like include it. Um, Uh, what did I call it? Danny JS. And normally it worked. It just reloaded it. And 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 yeah, so with the way the way it got included is you know the, the thing dynamically whoops. The thing dynamically added something like that that has like you know Danny dot JS and uses like Ah, okay. And, so that's what that's you mean, it. but that that gets generated on the fly for you when you're developing. Yes, we, that there's you know, I mean, of course, you could write it by hand and have you know the the the, the thing encoded for you, uh, or even encode it yourself. Um, but like the idea, the idea here is really, I'm trying to make a thing that's that that feels web native to web developers, and so I don't want to bother you with like, hey, have you heard about IPLD? It's wonderful. Um, you know, basically, you 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 write. The, the, this is like the dumbest. It's the dumbest web thing ever. But like anyone can write this, right? Um, and you point you point the lucid thing at it, and you get a tile out of it. Um, part of what I'm interested in is so that w one of the things that Boris was saying is that people are using um, open frames a lot since Warpcast added support, and those things are horrible. Um, it's just basically you have to make your entire um, app out of images, um, but like they really work as embedded social things, um, and it's really easy to like point that to your website uh, because everyone can do images and everyone can do like handling a post thing and and sending an image back. Um, the idea here is like it's it's the same but with like a much better interaction model, and so you can just like point this thing to a directory and it will make it will make a a, a tile app for you, right? 
Um, cool. In terms of running this in in the browser, it would be really good if we saw the 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 extension handling thing because like this works better with 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 its own scheme. Um, but we can figure out other ways of loading tiles into the browser if we have to. Um, service worker, the service worker is really really basic. Um, you know, it it all it does is it initially fetches the manifest. And once it has the manifest, this is like the, the whole of the thing, right? It just like does very basic lookup in the thing. Either it's a four or four, or it has the it it fetches the the CID and returns it with the right mind type. That's it. It, 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 most of this is comments. It, it really it, this is really meant to be a simple and stupid and be web developer friendly. That's 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 all of the work is getting rid of stuff basically. That's it. So what's next for this? And what are some of the things that you're thinking about or like the challenges that you could see in terms of interop? I mean, I'm like tempted to just like, you know, drop the whole Blake topic and, you know, if we're not doing Unix FS and have big blocks and like, that's just my own sort of personal curiosity, but like, what are some of the things that you're seeing for this to kind of like maybe gain a little bit more steam and interoperate with some of the existing stuff that we have i mean i i think one of the next things i i'm considering uh, i mean possibly both but like e either of two next steps um one is is adding support for easily publishing this and so you know how you know like now i'm done developing my thing i want to go like you know lucid publish um and it goes out there and you know i'm not sure what the best approach is to make this really easy on people is it like run the local helia thing whatever and just like puts it on uh, on ipfs but you have to like keep your, your machine going or you know use w3c store that w3c storage um one of those options something simple um and and so you know it, Creating an account is sort of like a bit of friction that I would like to avoid if we could, but you know, maybe maybe we can maybe that's tolerable, and then it's just online. And the other thing I'm considering is I'm looking at this as something that could be embedded in social media posts, and so I'm I'm trying to figure out which um which where where to to experiment with that. I think Nostra might be the easiest. To experiment with, but I'm I'm still I'm still poking uh, at options. Um, Blue sky would be nice, but it, it, it's it's complicated to extend Blue sky without extending the, extending a whole PDS. Whereas Nostra is just like sort of like well, it's basically do whatever you want and <laughs> see who can read it. Um, Where are you thinking? Oh, the, I guess how, how do how would you like to see? Um, the like data retrieval of all the subcomponents work, right? Like if the if the tile protocol handler is just like give me a CID, or even if you had the manifest, if you'd have to go and like fetch all the data. Um and you want to go and embed this in places, like how do you want to see that work? Do you want to just like chuck in one of the like just chuck in like the verified fetch thing and have it go do that for you? That 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 was my thinking. I mean, the only reason I'm not using verified fetch there is because I can right now. I'm only talking to my dev server, and so I have like literally ten lines of JavaScript that can do that. Um, but 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 really, like this this is something that I I think verified fetch would be the 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 logical first implementation. Um, of course, if like it, the you know the sky's the limit afterwards in, in when when it comes to retrieval but i think i think starting with verified fetch would be the logical first step yeah and then you just plug in whichever the retrieval thing is you need under the hood whether it's from a specific endpoint yeah yeah or whatever yeah yeah that makes sense to me i mean there yeah there's the there's the like where do I get interoperable things if I want to have single blocks bigger than two megs stick? Yeah. Um, <laughs> which to like, I don't know, maybe be, be more precise. Um, and for anyone who has like maybe less context on this, if you, it's probably a bad idea if you're trying to fetch data in a peer to peer network 
to fetch data and then have to download like a hundred megs before you validate if it was correct or not. Um, your your phone may not have you know that much capacity to deal with that yep. much spam. Um, and so, so some level of like incremental verifiability there makes sense. Uh, people do these things in different ways with different Merkle trees, mostly. It doesn't have to be Merkle trees, but they mostly end up looking like Merkle trees, whether it's the internal Blake tree Merkle tree or the Unix FS ones or whatever. Yep. Um, yeah. So figuring out like how to extend the ones that we need. So if we need support for you know the large Blake tree ones or the BitTorn B2 ones or whatever, put them where they need to go. Um, yeah, would really like to have the spec for how we distribute and store the both things like you know the like three internal trees but also just separating like the file bytes from the proof bytes i feel like is the thing that makes adaptability here easier because that means you sort of get to leave the folder of files alone right like nobody has to touch them they live exactly as they are um, but then like all of the little proof things get to live off to the side somewhere that you can handle when you need to prove to somebody that the thing is correct. It, exactly. I mean, and that that's actually how the backend server is implemented. It generates CIDs, but it serves from disk, right? And and actually you can fool it because it's a dev server. It doesn't care. You can change the thing afterwards. Um uh, but yeah, it just keeps it just keeps the CID to 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 file mapping, and it serves from that. It doesn't copy it into a separate store. Um, one thing that I was wondering is like, would would it make sense to 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 put like the 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 proof container in the manifest since it's auto generated, and you might want to distribute it with it, um, or does that get too big? I don't know. Um, one of the advantages of doing this. Uh, for web stuff is that if you you, you really don't need you, you you actually i mean it, depending on on your build on your on your build system you don't need to pack everything into a single massive js file um and so the odds are that almost every single file that you have in your thing is going to be small and none of them is going to hit the two the, the 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 two megabytes boundary anyway right until you do video but like people shouldn't do video it sucks yeah <laughs> or if you do video, do it with like, you know, MPEG dash and like you, you break your thing up into small bits anyway. So, but yeah, no, it, it would be good. Like if anyone's interested in like figuring out, like having one way of doing things and like, you know, specifying it, like I'm really focused on just like having one way of doing things and it, keeping the data in the directory and like making, making, helping people not think about what's happening basically is is the goal that's it that's really cool um i wonder uh, maybe like a closing thought is like with the short term glue as you mentioned that uh, you effectively you you effectively like run your own http provider <laughs> here um so like look trying to figure out how to glue uh, this uh or put it in into our existing ecosystem uh, uh loading that from a subdomain gateway kind of like gives you a means of uh bootstrapping without having to host the thing um the blocks well Maybe that if you have a, a bigger block and you did not do the the chunking that's under the limit, maybe a, an interrupt glue would be range requests over uh, yeah. uh, a, a single block uh, trustless gateway, which just happens to be like your HCP provider that supports the, the range requests. Uh, and that way we don't invent anything new. It's just like plain HTTP and the existing gateways. It just happens that the gateway that happens to provide Blake free hashes also supports range requests over them. Uh, something to explore. Yeah. 
I mean, yeah, it'll I work, think, I think, but if you're discovering those dynamically, then you just open up the attack vector again. Yeah, so that's like it requires client to be smart. Kind of like, oh, if it's a Blake free, I don't fetch one gigabyte. I I all I kind of like, you know, could be that oh, we need additional metadata in manifest somewhere for the client to know which ranges to request. Uh, but the client needs to be smart to okay, I never go above two megabytes or above like some safe safety limit, right? Yeah. Yeah, and 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 I mean one one way of deploying this without changing existing gateways is to deploy this as a regular Node.js thing, right? Because the the, the built-in dev server is, it, it really is just this, uh, and that's, that's all it's doing. Um, it, know, it knows the root CID, it knows the directory, it knows how to map things, and it just like keeps listening to, to, to make sure it works. And so, yeah, this could, you know, with a little bit of extra complexity support range requests there, Put, add support on the client, and then you deploy to your own server with a system that does that does sub, sub, subdomain gateways just for your content, um, and you know whoever else can also use it. Um, yeah, you could also like announce your gateway as a provider, and then yeah, we are nearly there. Yeah. Yeah, you, you could announce your gateway as a provider to 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 IPNI, and that's it. <laughs> Any other questions? I want to make a demo that's not just the cat, but you know. I'm glad it worked on the fly when I added JavaScript because I hadn't tested that. So <laughs> it's a good day for demos, it seems. It's a good day. I like for to demos. some extent, there, there's this thing where, like, when you're trying to add, we'll call it, you're trying to add resiliency or something to the application, the idea is that it looks the same as the less resilient one. It just works more when more things fall apart, right? And so yep. it's just like it is the same, and like your demo is like that. It is in fact mostly the same. Um, this is boring. Then, this is boring. <laughs> and then I guess you can make it more exciting by like simulating the guy who's going and tripping over all the wires, right? Um, and being like, oh, and ta-da, still, still works. Right. Well, thank, 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 thank you all for, for, for your time. Thanks, Robin. I think that brings us to an end. Um, so anyone who's joined, thank you. And uh, we'll see you here at the next session. I think we don't have any sessions already in the calendar, but I'll be sure to create one after this one. <laughs>